Hello, this is Benjamin with ARI, your website company, and the point of this video will be to illustrate how to change text assets on pages like your homepage, your About Us page, and any other page on your site that has a text area. First, we'll start on the dashboard of our CMS editor. We'll hover over Site and click into our first submenu option, Pages. Once we enter into Pages, it gives a list of all of the pages on the site that currently have a paragraph area on them. For today, we're going to go ahead and use our home page paragraph that we have here that warmly welcomes people to your site. And the basic principles we'll be learning today, as I said, can be applied to other paragraphs on your site, such as the About Us, if you have a paragraph above your services, and many other places on the site. But using our home page paragraph as an example, we'll jump back to our editor. And of course, to access that home page paragraph after we've gone into Site and Pages, we'll click on Home. And then here on Page Detail Home, we're looking for the primary text asset which is this large gray box that we see up top. Again, we'll find the name Home, and go over to the far right and click on Edit. <clears throat> and here we have the paragraph for our home page. Now let's get into some of the basic changes that I see people make on all of these pages, including your home page. The first thing that they often ask me is, okay, Ben, how do I do something basic like insert a picture on this page? Sure. Place your cursor roughly where you want that picture to appear on your page. Then go into your second toolbar down and hover over a box that looks like a small picture of mountain and moon. When you hover your mouse over it, as you can see, it will say Media Browser. Click on Media Browser. And now to get a brand new picture from your computer or your device, Click on Upload, then to the far left, select Files, and we'll go ahead and grab a basic image today, so this 1960s Briggs & Stratton engine, I believe it's a five horse. Select that one, and Open. Once you have a full 100% and a green status bar next to the name of that image, it has added it to the Browse tab. Click back to Browse and you should be able to find that picture here. Now, just in case you've got a lot of pictures in this file browser and like me, they can be slightly disorganized, you can always use the title of that picture and search for the title of the picture up top. So let's say that we couldn't see that picture right here. We could type in a part of that picture's name like 1960 and it pops right up. Awesome. We'll click on that image, and now before we insert it onto the page, it does give you some sizing options. Recommended size, we'll put this image in um, at its full size, and then our system will try to pull it down into a size that it both displays it well, doesn't affect loading times on the site, and will try to put it in there in such a way that it doesn't look pixelated or bad looking in any way. The next one down is your original size of the image. 930 is roughly twice the size of a postcard. 730 is just bigger than a postcard. 400 is roughly the size of a business card. And then we have the 180 size. Now this one I like to refer to as the thumbnail size because it appears, as you could probably guess, roughly the size of a thumbnail like you have on the desktop of your PC. We'll select the 180 and insert selected. Now an image is good, as they say an image is worth a thousand words, but what would be even better is if you could link it to some place on your site. So as an example, let's turn this picture into a clickable link instead of a static image. Sure, once you have your image there, click near the center of the image and you'll get this small toolbar that drops down. You'll find a small icon that looks like a piece of chain when you hover over it. 
it says insert link. Click insert link. And here it's asking for the URL in which you want to link to. Well, let's go ahead and link this directly to the contact us page as an example. So we'll click over to the tab where we have our open website. We'll use our navigation to go to the contact us page. And if we want to lead them to this page, go up to the address bar above this page, highlight the entire address, right click to copy, jump back to your editor, and paste that address in where it says URL. Now before you click insert, you do have one more option. If you are leading to an outside site, you may want to check this box that says open a new tab. <clears throat> That way, if you are sending them to an outside uh, business or an informational site, it'll still keep your website open so they won't become distracted and lose focus of your site because we wouldn't want that to happen. However, if you're leading them to somewhere inside your site, it doesn't really matter if we keep that last page open because they're still on your site. Insert. And now we can see that when we click out of there, it is now a clickable image. Awesome. Now let's say you don't like the alignment of this image. Sure. Once again, click in the center of the picture and you can use the alignment tools here to align left, align center, and align right. Now let's say after you insert the image onto this page, you're like, you know what? It's still a bit small. I don't want to delete the image and reinsert it because I just went to all the trouble of setting up that link. Can't I just click and drag to make it a little bit larger? Yes, you can. Click on the image and you'll notice that you get these four boxes that appear, which means that you can click and drag to make the image slightly larger. You won't want to go too much because then, because you are expanding the initial pixels that were put there, if you go too large pulling it, it can become slightly pixelated as you can see on the screen now. And because I don't actually want this image there, down beneath we can see the picture of a old school steel trash can. And when you hover over it, it says remove. Well, let's delete that image. Delete. And just like that, it's gone. The next thing I see people do quite a bit is they're like, hey Ben, I want to insert on one of my videos pages that I have a demonstration of the new product lineup from steel or Toro or one of those or maybe they have some maintenance videos that they found on YouTube they find might be helpful to their customers and they go how do I insert a video here sure once again place your cursor roughly where you want that video to be inserted then go to your secondary toolbar and you'll hover over your mouse over what looks like an original 24 millimeter camera and it says insert video click insert video. <clears throat> Once again, it's asking for URL, and this will have to be either a Vimo or a YouTube uh, URL. So to gather that URL, we'll open up a brand new tab of our internet browser, and we'll jump over to YouTube. And just for today's example, I'm going to grab any old video. But honestly, you'd want to look up something way more to the point. Uh, eight potato gadgets put to the test. Sure, why not? And the idea is once you get to the video that you would like to post, highlight the entire address from above, right click to copy, click back to your editor, and paste that link in and hit insert. And just like that, you can see that that video pops up here and they'll stay on your site and watch that video instead of clicking on a link like this, going over YouTube and potentially getting distracted from when they came on your site. Great. Next, let's say that you do want to create a link over to like they did here with service department using text. Well, it's a really similar process. Let's say that we wanted to link outdoor power 
over to that new equipment page that's on our site. Sure. As you can see, I just clicked and drug over that text to select it. We'll go up into our secondary toolbar and click on what looks like a small section of chain. And it says insert link. And once again, you'd be looking for that particular link that you want to go to. Well, once again, let's jump back over to our site. Let's lead them into new models. And let's say that for this link, we wanted to bring them specifically to Echo products. Sure. Once you get to Echo products, highlight that link above, copy, jump back to your editor, and once again, paste that in and insert. And now when we deselect that underlying text, you can see that it's now hyperlinked. Awesome. One of the handy organization tools that I see people ask about a lot is, Ben, if I'm going to put in product information either for products that I'm selling uh, on the site or products that I'm setting up for a rental page, what is the best way to format that so I get a uniform format from top to the bottom of the page so it looks good? Well. Arguably, I'd say one of the best tools for that would be our table tool. You'll go up to your secondary toolbar, hover over what looks like a small cheese grater, ha ha ha, and it says insert table. Click on insert table. And now you can simply hover over these cells to choose the size of that table. We'll go three by three just for the example and it drops it in right where our cursor was. Now, for either a rentals page or a products page, this is how I would suggest to format it. In your most left column of cells, in your top left, this is where I would suggest putting in that image, and I would suggest putting in an image that is either that 180 or 400 size. Then in your center cell to the right of it, you would put in a description of that product, and then your final top right cell, this is where I'd put in either the flat price for that item or the price per a day or price per hour. And then as long as you keep those images that you're inserting in this left column in these left cells roughly the same size as you're going down, you'll have a nice uniform format that goes down the rest of the page and looks very professional. When you save and publish one of these charts when you're done, these grid lines do not show up on the final site, so it will make you look like a legitimate professional. Now let's say that you are having a bit of trouble with this WYSIWYG editor, and you're like, okay, Ben, what are some ways that I can really troubleshoot this editor and try to get the change that I want to go through uh, a little bit easier? Well, the first thing that I would suggest if you're having trouble with alignment of a YouTube video, a picture, a paragraph, and you change the alignment of that element or piece of data, and it's still not working for you, I would suggest clicking over to Code View, which you can see right here. Looks like a double-sided Christmas tree, if you will. Click on that. And now, do not get intimidated by not being an expert at HTML code. If you need to do something like align an image or align a YouTube video, you can simply type it into a Google search, how to align YouTube video using HTML, and then insert that text onto this page. And if you don't do well with written uh, directions, there's always a YouTube video that will take you through the basic steps of, te of text that you need to insert in here in order to get it done. Now let's say whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to align or fix, you try to do it with the basic tools up here. Then you tried to use the code view, and for whatever reason it's just sticking and you can't get it to work. Well, you can jump back to your dashboard and my next thing to do would be to call into our technical support that you have down here. You can call into that tech support number or email them and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Could you help me do it? 
or if you do not want to call into tech support and you would rather us do it for you, you can go down to request update, click on request update, and you can either give us uh, written instructions or let's say that you jumped into a Word document and you go, this is how I want the page to be formatted. If you would see my attached document, this is how I want the columns to be, the pictures to be set up. Could you make it look like that Word document? And then insert that Word document underneath attachments. It'll give them some visuals to go by. And if you click the notify me when complete, not only will they notify you when those changes are complete, but if they have any questions during the process about how you want it formatted, that gives them permission to contact you as well. Then you'll hit request update. Now, keep in mind this is a limited tool. They do monitor your hours and they do monitor your time uh, used, if you will. And there is roughly a four to five business day turnaround before the change would appear on your site. But ask yourself, is it better that you sit there and get frustrated and struggle with it or have one of our professionals step in and either assist you with it or do it for you? It all depends. That is the best way that I would give you uh, to troubleshoot uh, the, having any issues with alignment of text, pictures, videos, or any other elements that you've put on that page. Any of those formatting within those text areas for pages like your homepage, your About Us, if you have a paragraph above your services, and other areas that text can be found. That is all I have for you today, folks. Thank you for joining me on this video, explaining some of the basic changes that you can make to those text assets on your main pages of your site. This is Benjamin saying, good day.